Hey guys, welcome back. This next part of our series in the series of the Exodus is kind of a part two to last week's with um, Balaam being tried to be hired to curse Israel. Now, he couldn't curse Israel because you can't curse someone that God has, has blessed. But something else happened. Something else. And we find a, a clue to this in the book of Revelation, actually, in the letters to the churches. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 12. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your works, where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name, and you, and you hold fast to my name, and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas, my faithful martyr, was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. Because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. And we think of Revelation, we don't think of Balaam, right? It says, you have the doctrine of Balaam. Now notice this, it says, who taught Balak, the king, to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. This is part of that message to this church of Pergamos. And, and John is told there that Balaam told Balak, the king, if you want to get to the children of Israel, it's not by a curse, but by idolatry and sexual immorality. So let's see how that happened and what was the result of that. And we find that in Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. This is about when Israel is about ready to go into Canaan. They've been wandering around the wilderness for 40 years. Moses is prepping the people. And Balaam was supposed to curse Israel, but you, he can't do that, right? Because you can't curse who God has blessed. And so if someone says a curse on you, well, that's not going to matter because that's not how things work. But if they can get you to turn, and this is what happens. Now Israel, verse 1, remained in the Acacia Grove. This was an area that was fertile and it was easy to live in. And the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to sacrifice to their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel joined Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. So we have in this setting, instead of this curse coming upon um, Israel, they slide in a different way. The devil finds another way to get the children of Israel to turn, and it's by two things. The women of Moab, they were committing, it says, harlotry with them. This would be prostitution, or bringing them in and having extramarital relations. And then the people invited them, hey, come worship our gods too. And this was a disappointment to God. It was God saying, wow, oh no, they have joined themselves and distracted themselves and going against um, and joining the things of Satan. Then the Lord said to Moses, take all the elders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. And so Moses said to the judges of Israel, every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor. Wow, this is something, this is something um, harsh, it sounds like. 
but it's when idolatry comes in and, and pollutes the word of God and, and shows them another way that is, just leads to death. He's trying to save them from it. Indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses, in the sight of all the congregation of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. All right, so a couple things are happening here. I see that the people of Israel are realizing what they had done and they were coming and repenting. And there was people that were, um, had been the, the offenders and they were being taken care of. And as there, this repentance was going on, one of the children of Israel comes in the sight of everybody and brings this Midianite woman. And everybody, in front of everybody, this, this brazen disregard for God's instruction. In front of everybody, he brings this lady into his tent. And so verse 7 says someone did something. Now when Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he sees this blatant disregard. It was causing a plague in the, in the people. When he saw it, he took a javelin in his hand and he went, he went after the man of Israel into the tent, and notice it's what it says here, and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel, and those who died in the plague were 24,000. He goes and takes them both out at one time, which means they were both together at one time. Now the name of the Israelite who was killed who was killed with the Midianite woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a leader of a, of a father's house among the Simeonites. This person was a leader, and he goes and disregards the commandment of God. He brought in a, a harlot from the Midianites and thought he could get away with it because of his position. The name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Cozy, the daughter of Zer. He was the head of the people of a father's house in Midian. Both of these people were children of, of position. And they paid for it with their lives. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Harass the Midianites and attack them, for they harassed you with their schemes by which they seduced you in the matter of Peor, in the matter of Kobe, the daughter of the leader of Midian, their sister, who was killed in the day of the plague because of Peor. Now, is the problem here marriage? Well, it sounds like they were, it says in the beginning of the chapter, that they were committed harlotry. So this was outside of of marriage. Is this a problem? Well, sounds like it. It takes their eyes off of God, and not only that, but it was also idolatry. They invited them to take part in the things of the, the false idols. Thus, they dis were distracted from what was important from God. Did it have an effect? Well, it had an effect. It said, what was it? How many people? Uh, several thousand, right? 24,000 were killed by this plague. It has a cost. It has a cost. And looking at Numbers 31, we see some more of the cost of this. Numbers 31, verse 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses, Take vengeance on the Midianites. For the children of Israel, afterwards you shall gather your people. And so Moses spoke to the people, saying, Arm yourselves for war and let them go against the Midianites to take vengeance for the Lord on Midian. 
a thousand from each tribe of Israel you shall send to war. So they were recruited from the divisions of Israel, 1,000 from each tribe, 12,000 armed for war. Then Moses sent them to war, 1,000 from each tribe. He sent them to war with Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the priest. Remember the guy with the spear? With the holy articles and the trumpets in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites, just as the Lord commanded Moses. And they killed all the males. And notice who else they killed. They killed the kings of Midian with the rest of those who were killed. Evi, Rechem, Zer, Hur, and Reba. The five kings of Midian. And Balaam, the son of Beor, they also killed with the sword. Did you catch that? Who was with the children of Midian? Balaam was. The one who had told them, this is how you get to the children of Israel. This is how you lead them astray. This is how you distract them. This is how you hurt them, is by sending in women and leading them into idolatry and adultery. To take their eyes off God. And because of it, 24,000 people died. But what would it have been like if... The Midianites had made friends with Israel. We would have had a different situation altogether. And so what happened? Balaam lost his life. He associated himself with the other side, with the, the enemy, with Satan's paradigm. He took the bribe and said, you can't be cursed, Israel can't be cursed, but this is how you get to them. He lost his life too. We know what side to be on. So what side are we choosing to be on? Numbers 26, verses 64 and 65 says, But among these were not a man of those who were numbered by Moses and Aaron. The priests when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, they shall surely die in the wilderness. So there was not left a man of them, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. For those 40 years, Israel had done many things complained, all kinds of different things. And one after one, the people who were 20 years and older that had doubted that they couldn't go into Canaan had died off. And so now who was left? Joshua and Caleb. Now, this might sound like God is harsh, but I want us to look at a couple other passages. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 it says do not love the things do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the father the love of the father is not in him it tells us that hey if we're loving the world and the things of the world god isn't in us James 4 verse 4 adulterers adulterers and adulteresses do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So what are the things of the world? Well, you, you just walk into the grocery store or listen to the radio or just exist in this world and, and you see what it's become. Proverbs 4 verse 23, Keep your heart, it says. With all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. The things in our life come out of our, our heart. And so this issue of Israel being distracted by the women of the Midianites, or distracted by their, their idols and their, their sacrificing, what was it? Well, 
Do we have that today? Do we have idols that we're distracted by? Well, let me ask you this. I want you to do something. I want you to take out your phone, which normally I don't ask people to do, maybe during the the sermon. But take your phone, and I want you to search something on Google. It's the word okapi. O-K-A-P-I. O-K-O-P-I. And this is an animal that is a very interesting animal. I want you to search that. O-K-O-P, or A-P, A-P-I, if I can spell it right. And hit go. And it will show you this animal who is pretty weird looking. It looks like a zebra and a hyena and a horse all put together. Now that was easy, right? This is as easy as it is, as, as easy it was to, to see that animal, to, to look it up and see him. Maybe you hadn't seen that before. Wow, well, the sun's bright. Um, it's just as easy for us to fall into the same trap that the, the Israel did with the Midianites. And what do you say? We're not falling to the trap of, of an idol of an okapi, this, this animal. No? Well, it's this idolatry or adultery, pornography. 85% of the traffic on Pornhub is on a mobile phone, is, is on this thing right here. And it's easy, just as easy it was as it was to get to that picture of the okapi as it is to get to pornography. In 2019, one website transferred 6.6 exabytes worth of data. That's essentially a gigabyte for every person on earth of pornography. Is this a problem that we have in the world? It, it plagues us. And even if you're not Christian, it has an effect. There are people um, that are fighting out against fighting against pornography that realize what it does to people even though they're not Christian Galatians chapter 5 verse 21 says envy murderers drunkenness rivalries and the like of which I tell you beforehand just as I also told you in times past those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of of God. Is this serious business? Yes. It was serious business for Israel and it's serious business for us. Proverbs 5 verse 3 and 4, the lips of an immoral woman drip honey and her mouth is smoother than oil. But the end She is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. It affects our lives, it affects our jobs, it affects our families. And so what is the solution? Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. God calls us to think about things that are constructive in our life. And what do we do if we've done those things? Psalms chapter 51 verse 10 is words from David who who fell into the same trap. And this he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. God is after reformation. God is after redemption. God is after loving kindness, mercy for us. And so he he offers us forgiveness, and he offers us hope of change. And so do you want that in your life? Let's pray. God, create in us a new heart. I pray that we will not fall into the trap that so many people have fallen into, but keep our eyes fixed on you. In your name, amen. Hey guys, thanks for being with me this week. I know the video is not great with the light, 
but uh, you can't control the sun. Have a blessed week. Come back again.